All right, well, come on in. This is Jonathan Dupree. This is Real Estate 101. Welcome tonight. We're going to focus on understanding personality styles to grow your real estate business and get more listings, convert more buyer consultations, attract more agents, keep deals together that are falling apart, work with affiliates, just all across the board, how to increase your communication skill sets so that you can build relationships and grow your business. So welcome to Real Estate 101. And if you're a guest, again, my name is Jonathan Dupree. Welcome to EXP World. Um, someone thought highly enough of you to invite you to one of our classes. They sent you a guest pass. That guest pass gives you access to EXP World for two weeks. So attend some other classes. If you want to know uh, the training calendar, you can go to expcloud.com, uh, expcloud.com. Dot com and you can see the training calendar and uh, attend any of the classes over the next couple of weeks that you feel like will help you and grow in your business and it'll let you experience some of the classes and the training that EXP provides. My name is Jonathan Dupree. I am uh, an agent and a trainer uh, here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I travel all over the country teaching and coaching and consulting agents and I've been in the real estate business a long time. owned my own brokerage of about 125 agents here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, merged my business or rolled in my brokerage to EXP a year ago, exactly a year ago. I started this class in May of last year, and it's just uh, been fun to teach you guys. Hope you're enjoying it, getting lots of great value out of it. There's some useful links that I've posted in the uh, chat box. I want to make sure that you... Um, that you have those. Also, I want to tell you real quick about an event. So there's a guy here in the room with me, Juan Andrew Kane, and Juan was uh, at my brokerage, uh, and he worked on staff and coached and trained agents all over the all over the place. And and then he came on staff and started working for us in my brokerage. And then uh, we rolled into EXP, and he got recruited away by. Uh, a company to go be a productivity coach and was there for a while and recently made the transition back here to EXP. And he and I were grabbing coffee and we were talking and we were having this conversation uh, about um, agents and how we just see the same questions come up for new agents struggling in their business. How do I create a listing presentation that's going to help me to get listings? How do I prospect and lead generate to actually get people to go deliver that listing pre presentation too? How do I set up my database? How do I use the tools that my company is already providing to me? How do I uh, c do a buyer presentation and, and actually create it first? And then how do I deliver it? Uh, how do I follow up with leads properly? How do I set goals? And, and we used to do something in our, my brokerage and we, uh, uh, what did we call it on? What was the name of it? I don't even remember. Um, shoot. I can't, I can't think. Of it. Uh, oh, I don't remember, but it was very good. It was I, I, yeah, it was real. It was really good. It was so good. We can't remember <laughs> the name of it. It was awesome. Uh, it really was. And it helped. We had more new agents in our brokerage closing business and and getting to two or three million dollars in closed transactions their first year in real estate and it was all based off of them attending this uh two-week class right out the shoot and and it was about uh getting them off to a fast start and helping them build their foundation anything you want to say about the course Juan? before i dive into teaching tonight because i know you and i are going to be teaching it together it's called a fast start yeah. school uh, I posted the link here in the uh, in the chat box, but I, if you have something, Juan, you want to just share about it, I, I want to give you that opportunity. Yeah, well, I mean, really, it's uh, it's for anybody who is new to the business, or if you've been repeating your first year over and over and over again, and you just haven't seemed to get any traction uh, under your feet, this is a great place to go and start, because what we're going to do is make sure your mindset is right, uh, so that you can find success, and then secondly, it's start to build the systems you know, each class you're going to actually do work. So it's not a lecture. It's it's a workshop. You're going to build your system so that they begin to work for you. You're going to learn how to lead generate, learn how to leverage the tools that EXP gives you, and then practice and, and create relationships with other agents that uh, you're going to be able to leverage in the future and, and use to, to further your business, right? And, and the idea here is that if you start implementing these things, you have a plan every day to start growing your business in a way that that's uh, reproducible and scalable so that each year you're doing better than the last instead of just repeating the same year over and over and over again 
Yeah, and it's uh, it's so it's three days a week for two weeks. It's a six day workshop. Each session is going to be somewhere between an hour and a half to two hours long, and you're going to be building stuff in that. You're going to be building your listing presentation. You're going to be building your your buyer uh, presentation. You're going to be building your database, adding people to it, picking up the phone and calling people practicing and role play in the scripts and then implementing and actually real play where you're picking up the phone and calling them. Uh, and I'm telling you, it is, it helped so many of our newer agents. I think back over the years that we did this, um, I, I, some of those agents are 10, $15 million producers now a year. And it was, it quickly helped them their first year in real estate get to three or $4 million in volume. Uh, this really builds a foundation. So if you want to learn more about it, you can click the link uh, there. Um, there's the, the uh, uh, yes, we, we're, everything that we're teaching in this, this Fast Start School is using the tools you have here at eXp. So when we're talking about your database, you're going to be building your KV Core database, building campaigns, building landing pages, building squeeze pages, all the things you need to do to generate leads. So this business really focuses on prospecting, presenting, and following up. Prospect, present, follow up. Prospect, present, follow up. Using the suite of tools that you have. You're going to be creating your listing presentation and buyer presentation using the tools that we already have provided through eXp Marketing. Uh, so it is, uh, it's going to be a great session. If you want to learn more about it, you can click the, that link. And if you want uh, the one that's above useful links, uh, that's, you want to click the one uh, that, let me repost it because I just realized I posted two separate links uh, there and then we'll dive into the session tonight. Um, so the the one that says here are some useful links just gives you a bunch of uh, links, our, our group and workplace, uh, email list where the recordings are posted, all that good stuff. And then the link I just posted is going to bring you to the page about the Fast Start School so you can learn more about that. Okay, so that's the dive into tonight's session. Um, the, I thought it would be neat in Real Estate 101. I used to teach the DISC class weekly for EXP and uh, it was on Wednesdays. They still have it. They still teach it. I just backed out of teaching because I had a lot going on at the time. And I thought I'd bring it into the mix tonight because this is a skill set that you need to learn. You need to understand how to communicate at a higher level with people, not just know what your style is, but understand how to identify where other people are on the map in the sense of understand their personality styles and be able to figure it out really quickly without telling them, I need you to take this assessment real quick before I can look at your house, right? You want to be able to look at things in their house. You want to be able to ask them questions questions. Uh, you want to be able to just see their, observe their behavior and quickly get a good idea of where they are on the map so that you can communicate with them based off of their style, not yours. You want to adapt and be flexible so that you can communicate with them in a way that when they leave that meeting with you, they go, I, I just don't know what it is, but I just connected with that person. Have you ever had that happen? Anyone in here? Raise your hand if you've ever met someone and after that interaction, you just left that meeting and you said, yeah, I just connected with that person. I don't know what it was. And most likely it's because you were speaking each other's language. And, and sometimes we think it doesn't matter. But in this business, people do business with those who they know, like, and trust. And so if you want to really grow your business, then you have to figure out how do I get people to know me, like me, and trust me better. And one of the biggest ways that you can do that is understanding human behavior and then learning how to adapt and be flexible to speak someone else's language. I'm going to be showing you a lot of slides tonight. So up on the screen behind me, you should see uh, a slide that says understanding personality styles. If you can't see that slide, there's a little refresh wheel at the top right hand corner of the screen behind me. Click that wheel and you might have to click it a couple of times uh, to be able to see it. If you want to see it bigger so that the slides are closer to you and easier to read, right next to that refresh button is a magnifying glass. If you click on that little magnifying glass, it's going to make the screen bigger so you can see the slides better. Uh, so I just want to let you know that if you can't see it, like, man, those slides are so tiny, click the magnifying glass and they'll make them bigger. Uh, so 
tonight is what we're going to focus on. And really, there are three different styles. And I, what I want you to take away from this is people are different, but they're predictably different. And when you can understand human behavior and you can predict how people will act or react based off of certain behavior styles, then it's easy for you to adapt or easier for you to adapt and um, kind of mold your behavior to their style so that you make a stronger, better connection. Now you have your people who are your high Ds. They're dominant. 3% of the population fall into this category. Uh, then you have your influencers. Those are your high eyes. 11% of the population are high eyes. Then you have your S's, and your S's are steady, they're stable, they're nurturing. 69% of the population are high S's. And then you have your high C's. They're very compliant, conscientious. 17% of the population fall into this category. I want to start off by telling you there is no award for whatever style you are. There's not a right style or a wrong style, and we all have a little bit of some of this. It's a blend, and the goal in understanding DISC is to know what do you what trait, what style, behavioral style do you tend to lean towards most in your natural state and your adaptive state. So your natural state is who you are when you're at home and you just kind of let your hair down and you're with your family, you're just, you're who you are, you're authentic. And then your adaptive style is how you tend to adapt and change when you're in different environments, when you're around someone new, when you're at work and you feel like you should be expected to behave a different way or a certain way. So we all have different styles, right? You could be a, uh, um, a high S who's very steady, caring, nurturing, um, very slow pace, but then you get in rush hour traffic and someone cuts you off and all of a sudden you become this aggressive driver and you can shift to this high D style. So we, we can all adapt and change based off of our certain situations. But we want to talk about the overall picture of what style you tend to, to lead with. Now, this has been around for a long time, a long time. Used to focus on earth, air, fire, and water to talk about people's behavioral styles. Then they kind of shifted to body fluids. And, and then we get into psychology in the 1920s, and it shifted to thinking, feeling, sensation, uh, intuition. And then William Martinson came along and he created, he's the father of what you know now as DISC, Dominant, Influencing, Steady, and Compliant. He wrote a book, and if you really want to dive into this, you can get his book on Amazon. It's an old book, so you have to kind of, they don't always have it in stock, but it's available on Kindle, and it's called The Emotions of Normal People. The Emotions of Normal People. And it's his study that went into this book. It's all about his study of going into development developing the DISC system. And you might say, what does this have to do with real estate? Everything, everything, because it's all about communicating. It's all about your communication skill sets. There are three contributing factors that you need to understand when it comes to your behavioral styles. The first is heredity, and then role models, and then experiences uh, that, you know, our, our, our teachers, our parents, our grandparents, uh, um, family who influenced us, and then experiences that we've had in, in our life. The things that have happened to us help shape and mold us uh, into who we are. It's also really important for you to understand this trust model because, as I said earlier, in this business, people do business with those who they know, who they like, and who they trust. And your goal in real estate, whether it's sitting down with the sellers in a listing presentation or with buyers in a buyer consultation or talking to an agent you're co-oping with and you're trying to keep a transaction together and it's falling apart, the goal is how can I build trust? How can I increase my trust with the other person so that we stay in this open communication and the potential of what the relationship could be? And so there's these four areas, and the first is the arena, and this is where we really have open communication. It's where we say, I know this about me, and you know this about me. It's, uh, it's the obvious, right? If you're sitting down with a seller, they know you're a realtor, you know you're a realtor. I mean, it's kind of, it's there. You're there for an appointment. It's in the arena. It's open communication. They know you're there to talk about a home being their home, putting their home up for sale, and they know that, and it's open communication. Uh, then you shift into the blind 
blind spots. Blind spot is where we really focus on self-discovery. And a blind spot, we all have them. A blind spot says, I don't know this about me, but you know this about me. And we all have blind spots. Now, if I don't trust somebody who's trying to share with me that I have a blind spot, I'm probably not going to be as open as I should be in listening to them to learn more about that and becoming aware and self-discovering that I need to make some changes or I need to make some adjustments. However, if I care about the person and I know they care about me and I trust them, I'm going to make some changes because I don't want these blind spots to stay there once I become aware and once I self-discover. John Maxwell talks about this in the sense of he calls it leader shifting. And leader shifting is the ability and willingness to make changes that will positively enhance personal growth and organizational growth. So enhance your career and your personal life. And you can't be the same and think the same and act the same if you hope to be successful in a world that doesn't remain the same, especially once you become aware of blind spots. And I'll share a specific example uh, about this in, in, in just a minute and, and how my wife shared a blind spot that I had and how a good friend of mine shared a blind spot as well. And, and I trusted them. And so I wanted to listen and, and be aware. Then we have the hidden and the hidden is, is the mask. You know, it says, uh, I know this about me, but I don't know you enough yet or trust you enough yet to let you know about this. You know, that's the, the, we, we tend to put this mask on and sometimes when we're around people, we don't trust and we don't let them all the way in our world. And sometimes we're not as authentic as we, we could be or should be. And we put this mask on and uh, we know, but they don't know. And then we have the unknown and that is the potential. And the potential says, I don't know this about me. You don't know this. Let's develop a relationship so that we can build open communication and stay in the arena. So the arena and the mask is what you see. The arena and blind spots is what other people see. And we want to stay in open communication because it prepares us for the potential. Now, I, my son, I have a 15-year-old, and I love him to death. His name is Jaden, and Jaden is a, a high eye, and, a, uh, and he, you know, he's very influential. He's a very loving, caring person, loves people, very relational. And uh, I'm a high D, and uh, my S is like z below the zero line in the graph. If you've ever taken the DISC assessment, which tonight I'm going to tell you where to go to take a free DISC assessment, but if you below the graph uh, just simply means the less – uh, caring and nurturing you can be when you're graphing the S quadrant of the disc and the D is off the chart and he was, wasn't feeling well and he was sick and he had thrown up and it was a Sunday night and, and, uh, his side was hurting and, and, uh, he, he was telling me, uh, you know, that he, he, he wasn't feeling well and we were in the grocery store and I was trying to assess, I was trying to assess the situation. I care about my son greatly. And I looked at him, I said, you need to tell me right now on a scale of one to 10, 10 being get me to the hospital and one meaning I can go home. Where are you on that scale? And he looked at me and he was about to kind of cry, kind of teared up. He got emotional. And he's like, I'm a seven, but we can go home. And we ended up taking him to the hospital and he stayed in the hospital for a day and a half. And, uh, they thought it was this appendix, and it wasn't. It was just a bad virus. However, my wife said to me, you need to be more empathetic. You need to be a little more caring right now and nurturing uh, to, to Jaden. He needs to hear that and see that. And that was a blind spot that I had. I, didn't, I, I wasn't not caring about my son. I was just simply trying to assess the situation because what a high D does is they're fast paced. They can come across as aggressive. They can come across as if they maybe don't maybe care, don't all, the care all the way. And please and mute, your please mute your computer. I mean, your microphone. I mean, your microphone. And they're, um, they're simply, um, w I was simply trying to assess the situation and figure out what do I need to do to solve the problem and help my son? Do I need to get him to the hospital because it's Sunday night and the doctor's not open? 
Uh, so we want to know about those blind spots. I had another great friend of mine. He helped start my brokerage with me, and he passed away at an early age and way too early. But he's one of my best friends, and his name was Pat Guttery. And uh, Pat said, hey, can I talk to you for a second? And I said, sure. And he said, hey, listen, sometimes I feel like I'm talking to you and you, you're, you've got a million things going on and you're, you're looking at your phone and you're checking this and you're, you're, I can tell you've got your mind preoccupied with other things and you're not there. Can you be fully engaged in our conversations? And I said, man, yeah, I, I, I'm so sorry. That wasn't, that's not my intention at all. Blind spot. It was a blind spot. I, I trusted Pat. I trusted my wife. And so when they were, were making me aware of a behavioral style, I wanted to know that. So when someone who you know and trust is sharing something with you, be open minded to listen so that you can adapt and make changes. So let's break down the disc. And if you've never taken a disc assessment, you can go to tonyrobbins.com forward slash disc and you can take a free disc assessment. tonyrobbins.com forward slash disc and and you will be able to take a disc assessment. I'm reading in the chat box. I just flipped back to see some of the questions. How do we learn to be an expert at utilizing disc? The first step is take this class that we're doing right now. Uh, take a disc assessment. I would pick up the book Emotions of Normal People and and then begin to implement the uh, the strategies we're going to talk about tonight on a daily uh, daily basis. But I've been studying DISC for a long time. I'm a certified behavioral consultant. All that means is that I study this stuff way too much. And I've actually taken tons and tons and tons of advanced classes on understanding, interpreting the graphs and uh, the midpoints of each style and then breaking down each style. And uh, But starting point is just to learn, get a good overview. I'm going to give you the slides that I'm sharing tonight. Uh, and, it, and it's going to give you a lot of information as well. So Let's break it down, though. The first thing I want you to know is that uh, you're either active or passive. You're either fast-paced or slow-paced. That's the first step. And then if you're active, and uh, you're going to fall in the high D or the high I side. If you're more passive, you're going to fall in the high C or the high S side. So that's the first step. Are you more active, fast-paced, or are you more passive and slow-paced? The second uh, part of this is... Are you task oriented or people oriented? If you're more task oriented, you're going to be on the high D or the high C side. And if you're more people oriented, you're going to be on the more high I or the high S side. So now you break it down and you go, okay, well, if I'm more active and task oriented, dominant, direct, decisive, I'm going to be a high D probably. So if I meet somebody and I'm walking into their home and they shake my hand and they shake it pretty hard and firm and, and uh, they're talking fast and they're talking loud and, and maybe they're tr taking control of that conversation, uh, they're more fast paced and they're like, hey, look, let's get right down to the numbers. I want to look at what you think we can do with my house. Probably a high D in that scenario, just from that right there. If... On the other hand, they're more active and people-oriented. They pat me on the back when I come in, and they're like, Jonathan, I'm so glad that you're here. They're still talking fast. They're still talking a little bit loud. They're a little bit animated, and they say, I'm so glad that you're here. And uh, listen, before we get started, you you want can I, can I tell you a story real quick? I mean, you're not going to believe this house. We're selling it, but it's just we hate to sell it because we've had so many memories here, but we're looking forward to where we're going. But let me tell you what happened here when we first and they tell you a story. I don't know what it is, but they just start telling you a story or they want to show you uh, all their pictures that they've got up on the wall. Probably a high eye. They're influencing. They're interactive. They're interested in people. They're going to ask me lots of questions. So active and people-oriented, that's going to be your high eyes. Now, if you drop to the bottom and you say, well, I'm more passive-oriented but people-oriented. I'm slow-paced and people-focused on people. I'm stable, steady, secure. That's your high Yeses. I walk in and they're talking a little bit softer and a little bit slower. And they say, you know, Jonathan, I'm so glad that you're here. Let me give you a hug. I'm a hugger. And hey, by the way, I just made an apple pie and some coffee. Can I get you some coffee and a piece of pie? I used to be the person that go, no, let's just sit down at the kitchen table and let's talk and let's focus on, on, on getting your house sold. I want to share with you what I do to get home sold. And they'd nod their head and they'd listen to me. But the whole time in their head, they'd be going, why doesn't he want my coffee? 
why, why does anyone want to eat my, my, my pie I made? And they're not listening to anything I'm saying. So I've learned how to adapt. And if I'm for the high S and I can tell I'm with a high S, I'm going to slow down a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit softer. I'm going to focus and force myself to smile more and, and to be a little bit maybe more, I, I, I want to say touchy-feely. That's not the right word, but I'm going to pat them on the back and, and they offer me something. I'm going to take it and say, thank you so much. That's so, I appreciate you doing that for me. Uh, so it's adapting your style. And then if they're more task-oriented and passive, that's your high C's. Uh, they're going to be really compliant, conscientious, analytical, um, correct. They're going to want to read all the paperwork. So if I can tell I'm with a high C and they're still talking a little bit more soft, but they're still direct and they're a little bit more slower pace, so kind of a little bit more, I say slower pace, like um, less trusting and they're trying to really... Uh, get a fix on what I'm doing and, and they have some numbers that they pulled before I even show anything to them, I better be prepared for that conversation because they're going to want to see all the information before they feel comfortable in moving forward and making a decision to work with you. And I'm just giving you one scenario. But those are your four styles, so your high D, I, S, and C. Again, to learn more about your style, you can go to TonyRobbins.com forward slash disc and take a disc assessment for free, and it only takes about 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, and I'm going to blow through these slides. I couldn't hide them, but this is, uh, this is in a class I teach in the report I use. So let's talk about your high D for a second. Your high Ds are active. Uh, they're, they are um, um, in, thrive in chaos. They have a high ego. They seek authority. Um, they're impatient. Their greatest fear is being taken advantage of. They're skeptical, right? Their greatest fear is, is being taken advantage of. Uh, my wife sometimes hates it when she's with me and we're talking to someone about something because I'm always trying to figure out the angle that they're trying to play to take advantage of me. And that's the greatest fear of the high D is being taken advantage of. Uh, and, and it's not, you know, people say, well, high Ds aren't great at relationships. No, that's not true at all. We love people. We, I have great relationships just with a handful of people that I really trust and really open up to. And I've been really working for a long time at becoming more the V word, vulnerable, and opening up uh, and, and sharing how I feel uh, with um, people in, in my world who are close to me. Because we have this fear of being taken advantage of. If you know that you're with a high D, you want to bookmark that in your head and know that they have this fear of being taken advantage of. And you are a sales professional. And so now you compound that because you're a salesperson, a sales professional, who they're fearful that you might be taking advantage of them in the biggest transaction that they're ever going to make in their life, or the sale or purchase of a home. They desire change frequently. They do many things at one time, and they respond to direct confrontation. In fact, my friends have given me a name called Captain Justice because the high D um, is not afraid of confrontation. In fact, you have to be aware of that as a high D. If you're a high D, you want to look at this and go, okay, I need to learn how to be a little bit more trusting and less skeptical, and I want to be a little bit less judgmental and, and work to navigate through confrontation versus responding to direct confrontation. Uh, then you, your, So your high D, what it measures is, uh, how a person solves problems and responds to challenges. So the higher the D when you take your DISC assessment, the higher the D on the graph that you get, the more active and aggressive you're going to be. The lower the D, the more contem contemplative you're going to be. Uh, so it, it's going to measure that, and the emotion that it's measuring is anger, how quickly you get to anger. And it doesn't mean that a high D is an angry individual. It just means we get frustrated faster sometimes, and uh, we have to be careful because we can come across as direct and blunt. Uh, so if I'm talking to a high I who loves to tell stories and they're animated and they're talking with their hands and the, like it's taking them 20 minutes to get to the point, uh, there have been times where, I, you know, I used to say things that I've had to, 
I've had to not say anymore. For example, someone would tell me a story and there may be a high eye and they're going into this long story and I'm in the middle of going to do something because your high D is task oriented. Your high I is people oriented. Your high D goes to a class and says, give me the information. The high I goes to the class and says, who am I going to see there and where are we going to hang out afterwards? And they're telling a story and I would say, hey, listen, I really need you to paint this story with a bigger paintbrush, please. Meaning get to the point. And, uh, you know, my wife would go, you can't say that. I'm like, well, why can't I? I'm trying to get them to get to the point. So I've had to learn how to adapt. It just means we get a little bit more frustrated. And sometimes we say what comes to our mind too quick. Some behavioral tendencies. I'm not going to read through all these. Just give you a couple strengths and limitations. Uh, strengths are strong-willed, uh, productive, decisive, practical, visionary, um, and then let's look at some of the limitations. Some of the limitations, they can come across as unsympathetic and cold. Think back to the story I shared about my son. I cared about him greatly, but I came across as unsympathetic in that scenario. I don't ever want to do that, ever. And I really worked hard from that point forward to change how I talk to my son because I don't want to come across as unsympathetic at all. It was a blind spot that I had. Can come across sometimes as cruel or sarcastic or uh, domineering, uh, very proud, egotistical. Uh, they, they won't give up when losing. Like they, They're just going to keep moving forward. They don't know when to jump the gap. Uh, so those are some strengths and some limitations of your, uh, of your high uh, D. I'm, I'm jumping through the questions to make sure. You're going to keep circling the airplane. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Or land this plane. Yeah, that was, uh, that's, uh, I've learned how to not say those kind of things anymore. Uh, I've learned how to say them nicer. There's, that's the word I'm looking for. Some relational characteristics. This is how high Ds build relationships, things that you need to know. Their strengths, their experts in leadership. Uh, they establish goals. They're motivated to take action. They know the right answers. Um, now sometimes that that's a strength, but also could be a weakness because they can let you know, they know the right answer and you might have an idea. And, uh, I had a staff member one time that um, said to me, I, I'm nervous because I feel like you shoot down all my ideas. And I was like, I don't shoot down all your ideas. And my wife's like, oh, yeah, she was on staff. She's like, you pretty much, you shoot down their, their ideas. She was telling me later, I was like, yeah, but that's because their ideas aren't aren't really that good. <laughs> now I had to go, whoa, wait, okay. And, and I'm exaggerating a little bit. Um, however, again, you know, the blind spot for me where I had to say, okay, you know what? I didn't know I was shooting down your ideas. That wasn't my intention. So I had to adjust how I spoke to that person so that they felt safe and secure and sharing their, their ideas in, in a group setting with us. And that I made sure to place value on that so that they knew I was listening to them. So it could be a strength or it could be a, uh, a weakness. They excel in emergencies. They thrive in chaos because they just, they, they, they're decisive. They make decisions. They don't have to think a lot about it. They just make decisions. The problem is once they solve the problem, they can go create more chaos because that's where they thrive is in chaos, not when things are calm. Uh, so that's a, a, a challenge there. There are limitations. They tend to over-dominate. So if you're in a conversation and you're a high D and you're working with a high I, a S or a C, be careful. Don't take over the conversation. You want this to be interactive when you're dealing with clients, when you're dealing with buyers, when you're dealing with, uh, with, with, uh, the, with sellers. Um, and, and so I'm seeing some of the chat. This is not the same content every week. Every week we focus on different things to help you grow your business. Uh, so some other limitations, too busy for family. Uh, they tend to, uh, to use people. Uh, they can't say, I'm sorry. Uh, that's a big one that, that they, you know, that the high D needs to learn and adapt. Again, occupational characteristics, their strengths are they're goal oriented. They see the whole picture. They organize well. They, they are quick to take action and implement limitations. They have a low tolerance for error. Uh, they don't analyze the details. They're more like ready, fire, aim instead of ready, aim, fire. Uh, they're, they're, they're bored by, uh, um, the, the trivia or mundane stuff. Uh, they can come across as rude or tactless. Uh, they can make um, rash decisions without thinking it through. My wife will always say, have you, have you thought this through? I've become a much better writer. I write, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but um, I wrote a book called The Mega Agent Mindset. 
Uh, and then I'm working on another a couple of uh, books right now, and I, I write a lot of courses for realtors. And I become a much better course writer, content writer over the years because uh, I now take time to process and think things through and mastermind and brainstorm with multiple people where before I didn't. Uh, so it's really helped me by becoming aware of that limitation. Sometimes the strength can become a, a limitation. So you want to know both your strengths and your weaknesses and how to work with both of them. Your high eye, uh, they're very active. Um, they work well in a friendly environment. Uh, they're emotional. They're people-oriented. Their greatest fear is rejection. Why? Because they're people-oriented. Uh, so if you're a high D and you're going in to meet with a high eye, you want to make sure you listen uh, to their stories, let them talk, let them feel like they've been heard. Uh, because if not, then they're going to feel rejected and they're not going to work with you. So it's just really, they can be disorganized. They're optimistic. They're very encouraging. So what the eye is going to measure on the graph is how a person attempts to influence or persuade others. And the higher the eye, the more they're going to be verbal and persuasive. The lower the eye, the more they're going to be nonverbal and reserved there. So it's just measures, um, uh, their their ability to persuade or influence others. And the emotion that it measures is optimism. Again, um, you can go back through all these slides. I'm, I'm doing a, a half-day slideshow in, in one hour, so I'm not going to go through all of this. But the strengths, they're outgoing and charismatic, warm and friendly, very talkative. They love telling stories. They have a good sense of humor. Uh, limitations, they can be undisciplined. Uh, they can be disorganized, undependable. Uh, you got to be careful of that because they don't want to reject anybody. So they can tend to overcommit themselves uh, and you don't want to overcommit yourself. They can exaggerate. Uh, they can, um, they can kind of dwell on the trivia. They can get angry easily. Uh, and they can kind of come across and seem phony to some people. So you just want to be aware of that. Relational characteristics, uh, they're, they're, uh, um, they're like the circus master. They're the center of the show. They're, they thrive on compliments. So if you're working with a high eye, compliment them. Find things in their home. If you're in their home on a listing presentation, compliment them about th their house. Uh, ask them about things that you see. Uh, 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 trophies, awards, photos, family vacations, ask them about the vacation that there, there's a big picture right there. Uh, they, they, they love that. Um, and some limitations, they can be disorganized. They don't listen to the whole story. They only hear bits and pieces, the pieces they want to hear. They need to be the center of the stage and they will dominate a conversation. So if you're a high eye, you want to be careful. You're not dominating the conversation. Um, because again, you, your goal is to make a connection. Some occupational characteristics, the strengths, uh, they are the, the people that volunteer all the time for jobs. They think up new activities. They, they uh, have a lot of energy and enthusiasm. Limitations, they'd rather uh, uh, talk than work. You know, They'd like to rather hang out and have fun, and uh, they don't always follow through. Uh, they can be undisciplined. They can sometimes have their priorities out of order. Uh, and they are easily distracted. So I'm a high D followed by I. The high, the I is next in mine. And uh, so I told you my friends call me Captain Justice, and they also call me Squirrel. Those are the two two nicknames that they my close friends have given me: Captain Justice and Squirrel. Uh, and so that's that's your high D and your high I. Your high S. Uh, they are passive aggressive in, in a favorable environment. They're loyal, they're a, a team player, they're gentle, they're nurturing, they're caring, they're a person of substance. Their greatest fear is loss of security. And uh, they operate from a high level of trust and they resist change and they adapt slowly. So if you work with a high S, you need to slow down a little bit. If you're a high S and you're working with a high D, you need to figure out how to speed up a little bit, how to pick up the pace a little bit, how to take a little bit more control of, of the conversation. Uh, the S on the graph is going to measure the pace at which a person undertakes activities and responsibilities. So the higher the S, the more that person's going to resist change or be slow to change. The lower the S, the more flexible and fast-paced 
they're going to be. Uh, and again, it's measuring their emotional expression, how they express emotion. Uh, a few behavioral tendencies of your high S. They're uh, very likable. They're diplomatic. They're efficient. They're dependable. Uh, they are the reluctant leader, meaning they don't need to be in the spotlight, but they can take over and take charge and do a fantastic job. Uh, they're very easygoing and relaxed, uh, quiet but witty. They're sympathetic and kind. Some limitations uh, they could sometimes be a spectator because they're not going to um, cause conflict. They're going to just go with the flow. So they could be a spectator even though they have a tremendous amount of value to add and contribute. They could be self-protective, indecisive, fearful to make decisions. Uh, they avoid responsibility sometimes. And they can be too compromising again because they will avoid that conflict. To, to keep peace and be that caring, nurturing, loyal person. A relational characteristics, they make a great parent. They're not in a hurry. They can take the good with the bad. They don't get upset easily. They're a good listener. Some limitations, they can be undisciplined. Uh, they don't change. They're not willing to change. Uh, they can take life too easy sometimes. They can stay uninvolved um, because they don't want to throw any kind of wrench in the uh in the plans they can sometimes judge others and come across as sarcastic and then occupational characteristics they're can they're competent they're steady um, they are able to mediate problems if you're a high s use your skill sets at, in the transaction if you're a high d you need to learn some of the skill sets of the high s to keep a transaction together when it could be falling apart you need to be able to not, the high D can sometimes get so emotional and um, involved and feel like the other, the deal's falling apart because remember their greatest fear is being taken advantage of that someone's trying to pull something over on them. And so then, then it just becomes a challenge to see who's going to win, where the high S is going to navigate to bring both sides together and thus make this thing happen. Let's figure out a way to navigate through this and keep this transaction together so everybody wins. Limitations, they're not very goal-oriented. Uh, sometimes it's hard to get moving. Um, they resent being pushed. You know, when I coach someone, if one of the first things I do is have them take a disc assessment. And if I have someone who I'm coaching and they're a high S, I ask them all the time. I ask everybody this question, but I ask them specifically, how do you want me to hold you accountable? Like, what does that look like? Because I don't want to push somebody in a way that makes them shut down instead of uh, move closer to their goals. And so it's really important to understand that with a high S. You push them, uh, maybe you're pushing them to do a price change because they need to lower the price. If you push too hard or in a certain kind of way that you come across, you're just going to have them shut down on you. Um, so it's really important to be aware of that. And then they can sometimes be an observer. And then finally, your high Cs. They're uh, conscientious, they're tentative. A response designed to reduce the, the an antagonistic factors in an unfavorable environment. They are the perfectionist. They're sensitive. Their greatest fear is criticism. Why? Because they're perfectionist. And if you're a high C, you have to be careful because you could come across as like um, judging someone else because they didn't do something the way you would have done it. You know, people, I, I always used to feel bad because I'd have all the time I can tell when I have a high C when I'm teaching a class because they love to point out a word I misspelled. And I'd always say, you know, if you can't spell something more than one way, you're just not creative. Uh, and that was my response. I, every class I teach, I always have someone who points out that I spelled something wrong. And uh, that's your high C. You have to be really careful, though, because when you're pointing out that, you're not trying to come across in a certain way other than just point as part of your style. Hey, look, this is how this is spelled. You have to be really careful um, because you'll take a high I or someone like that who, who really doesn't care, and you just, you just dr put a wall between you guys. So it's, it's really important to understand that. On the flip side, if you're a high I and you're dealing with a high C, you better try to do your very best to have your ducks in a row and be prepared for the conversation because they are going to be prepared. They're very accurate. Uh, they're going to ask you tons of questions. 
Uh, they require the details. They've already pulled comps. They already know information about the air. They probably know more stuff than you do when you sit down for your first meeting with a high C if they're a client. Uh, so it's really important to understand that and know that the C measures how a person responds to rules and regulations set by others. So someone, the higher the C on their graph, the more they're likely to comply with the rules, be compliant. The lower the C, the more they're going to seek independence. Uh, and the emotion that this measures is uh, fear. Some of their strengths, uh, they, they're very loyal, sensitive, they're self-disciplined, they're serious and purposeful, genius prone. Uh, they're also talented and creative. Uh, my son, I know this is weird, it tells you he's an I.I., but he's also a high C. And uh, he's brilliant. I mean, he, my 15-year-old, he is like, he, both my boys, I tell you, are brilliant. I love them, they're smart. But Jaden, uh, he's the kid who... Um, if you walk up into his pool table room, he had these pictures all over. I picked up his journal one day and was just kind of flipping through it. And he had, I mean, he had these trick, he's a big pool player. He had these trick shots all drawn out and he had his pathway to a hundred thousand subscribers in three years. This is when he was 12 years old. Yeah, he just turned 15. He just hit a hundred thousand subscribers. He did what he said he was going to do. And he's by the book, you know, they're the a high, a high C is going to do things. I mean, he's, he is a rule follower and I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, this might make uh, you think different of me. So my son is driving uh, to school and, um, and again, I want you to think about his YouTube is j just go type Jaden Dupree and he'll pop right up or Dupree trick shots. Uh, so he's just started driving. He's got his permit and, uh, he's, he's driving to school and I'm in the passenger seat and we're at this dangerous intersection and he's waiting for cars to come and he probably could have gunned it. I would have yelled at him. Uh, so he didn't, he uh waited and then before he could go, there was this Jeep behind us, and we're in a turn lane, and the Jeep behind us cut in front of him. Had he went, he would have hit the Jeep. Cut in front of him, almost got hit by the other cars coming and gunned it, and, and it scared Jaden to death. And then the cars went, and Jaden went, and I dropped him off at school. Well, the Jeep in front of us, I thought, was a student driver. And when I parked, when Jaden parked at the school, I saw the Jeep parked, uh, behind me dropping their kid off. And I went, that's a parent. And I said, I got out of the car and I didn't get into the driver's seat. And Jaden said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to talk to this parent real quick. He said, Oh dad, please don't. All right. Please don't. The high C doesn't like confrontation. The high D thrives on it. So I literally walked out into the middle of the road and held my, in front of the sheriff. The sheriff was there too, directing traffic. I stopped the Jeep like I did my, like I'm a traffic cop, right? I hand up. The Jeep pulls right up to me and I get to where it can't go and I stop it. And I walk up and I point at this guy's window and I say, roll your window down. The sheriff's watching the whole time. Like he's, he's just watching us. And I said, Hey, that was me that you just whipped in front of at that intersection. My son was driving and we had this conversation and, um, and, and, and it was a nice, I, I would, I definitely toned it down some. However, I confronted him on that. It, my son was terrified. He never would have done that. He's, he's very analytical. Uh, he's going to avoid conflict. Uh, he's, he is, um, but he has a he has a plan. He's very creative. Uh, it says musically gifted. You should hear him play the the keyboard, the the drums. The, I mean, you name it. He plays all kind of instruments. The clarinet. He I mean, he's just he's a brilliant kid. Uh, he made a twenty five on his ACT in seventh grade. You know, I took it three times and finally got to a nineteen, and that's all I needed to play college basketball. So I quit uh, taking it after that point. Your high C's are brilliant. You better be prepared. They have a plan. They know where they're going. And uh, so when you're meeting with them, you want to be prepared. So negatives, though, they can be very rigid. And that's him. He is a rule follower. He does not want to break the rules. Um, they can be critical. They can be moody. Um, they can... Uh, be uh, unsociable, you know, he could sit up all day long and play pool in his pool room by himself 10 hours a day. Uh, so it's, it, you want to be aware of that and learn how to adapt. If you're a high C and you're with a high I, you better learn how to adapt to that high I style a little bit more so you can be more relational. 
Uh, they seek high standard or they set high standards. They want everything done right. Um, they, uh, limitations, they sometimes have unrealistic goals. You know, my son came to me. It's like, I don't think you understand dad. This is when he was 12. He's like, YouTube is going to be my job. I'm not going to go work at Chick-fil-A. YouTube's going to be my job. And I was like, you're right. I don't understand. Uh, and, and now he makes more money than some of the agents, uh, uh, in my world do. And I said, I get it. Like, I understand now. I totally get it. Um, so it's just very cool They, they sometimes they, they, uh, uh, can be a little bit too meticulous or they can be socially insecure or they can be a little bit critical and unforgiving, hold back affection. So you just want to be aware of that. Their, their strengths on occupational characteristics, they're scheduled oriented, uh, again, perfectionist, high standards. Um, they, they are very organized. They can see the problem and find a solution limitations. They're not people oriented. Uh, they can become depressed over imperfections. Uh, they can be hesitant to start projects because they, they know how much work and effort they're going to put into it and they want it to be perfect. Uh, so it's just really, really important. Um, so again, just in a, in a, uh, in a nutshell, um, Sorry, I was reading the chat, and I just uh, deleted it on accident. Uh, so if you can, the person that just sent me that private chat, uh, if you could resend it to me, that'd be fantastic. Um, so in a nutshell, on each of the styles, your uh, your high D, they're instinctive leaders, they're self reliant, they get results, they maintain focus on the goal, accomplishing the goal. But don't maintain so much focus on the task that you miss building the relationship. That's critical for you to understand. The high I is very instinctive uh, communicators. Uh, they participate. They like to motivate the group, the team. They're spontaneous. They're agreeable. They respond well to the unexpected. Um, the high S's are very instinctive relators. They participate. They make other people feel like they belong. They show sincerity. And they can see an easier way to do things. And then your high C's, they're instinctive organizers. Uh, they are the do-it-yourself managers. Uh, they strive for logic and consistency. They control the details and they're conscientious. It's really important because when you sit down with people, you might sit down and have two different personality styles that you're trying to manage and adapt to because you've got a husband and a wife or or uh, you know two people that you're you're interacting with and they have two different styles and you have to be able to connect and communicate with all of all of them. Um, I want to just go over this real quick and then next week what I'm going to do is tie this into how you uh, interact with people based off of their style is specific to real estate. So I'm going to break this into two parts and then hopefully I can get Juan Andrew Kane to do a session. Uh, because Juan does a fantastic job uh, teaching the disc in a different style than I do on specific to um, going on a listing or buyer uh, consultation. So some personal areas for you to consider. If you're a high D, uh, strive to be an active listener. If you're a high D, you need to listen more. I always heard a phrase once, you have two ears and one mouth, which means you should listen twice as much as you speak. The second is be attentive uh, to the, 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 the clients, to, the, to what they're saying to you. It shows that you're listening. Maybe a little trick, this works for me and it forces me to listen. And it also lets the other person involved know I'm listening. Is when I sit down on an appointment with someone, I always say this. I always say, hey, listen, this is a really important conversation to me. And I want to make sure I don't miss anything that's important that you share. So is it okay with you if I take some notes? I've never had someone say, no, don't take notes. And when I pull out my notepad and my pen and I'm looking at them and listening to them and taking notes, it helps me to be an active listener and I do it for myself, but it lets them know I'm listening to them. What they're saying to me is important and matters. Uh, be less controlling and domineering in the appointment and in the conversation. If you're a high D, you have to be aware of this. It doesn't mean lose control. It just means don't dominate the conversation. Um, develop a greater appreciation for the opinions, feelings, and desires of others. Uh, 
Put more energy into personal relationships and courtesy. Uh, I, I know this sounds weird, but as a high D, we are nice people. Um, we are not mean people, but we can come across as someone who doesn't really care about others. And so you want to be aware of that and you want to, to focus on making sure you show that. Uh, so put some energy into being more courteous and, and say thank you and smile and, and listen and uh, show that you support other people in the conversation or in the transaction. Uh, take time to explain the whys of your statements and proposals. So when you're, you're making a, um, for example, I was on a listening appointment the other day. I was dealing with two different personality styles. It was a situation that they had to sell their house and they didn't really want to. And I said, okay, guys, here's what I feel like we should do. Where I used to would say, hey, listen, here's what we're going to do if I'm going to list it. And so instead, it was, here's what I feel like we should do. Let me tell you our price and strategy. And if we don't have an offer within our second week, we're going to reduce the price to this amount. And if we don't have an offer two weeks from then, we're going to reduce it again to this amount. And this is why I think we should do this. So always make sure that you share the why behind it if you're a high D. Um, and that way they'll know that you really do have their best interests at heart. Be friendlier and more approachable. Uh, your high eye. If you're a high eye, per, here's some personal growth areas for you to consider. Weigh the pros and cons before making the decision. Be less impulsive. Um, you know, have a plan. Be more result oriented. Uh, you know, just a little bit more. Focus on the task. Focus on accomplishing the goal. Uh, focus more on details and facts a little bit more. Um, exercise control over your actions, your words, and your emotions. Don't wear your emotions on your sleeve so much. Uh, talk less, listen more. If you're a high I, it means you're going to talk a lot. You're going to tell lots of stories. You're going to be very animated. Focus on listening more. Whatever you have to do, what other, other, it doesn't matter what style you're dealing with at all because you could be a high I talking to a high I. That high I wants to talk and, and you want to talk. So focus on listening more. Consider and evaluate ideas from other people and then concentrate on following through with task. And I know that that's tough as a high eye because that's my second trait. You got to follow through. Uh, and then if you're a high S, here are some personal growth areas to consider. Be more open minded to change. Be more direct in your interactions. You know, I'm sharing with you the styles you should adapt to and a high S is is not really wanting to change how they communicate. You got to force yourself to be willing to adapt and change and be flexible. Uh, focus on the overall goal rather than specific procedures. Deal with confrontation constructively. Develop a little bit more flexibility. Increase your pace to accomplish goals. Put a little more mm in your step, you know, a little more um, or pep in your step, whatever you call it, act with a little bit higher sense of urgency, a faster pace, show more initiative, and then work at expressing your thoughts, opinions, and feelings because they matter. So don't be afraid to share. If you're a high S and your client is a high D, if you're not careful and you don't express your concerns or your ideas or your opinions, they will dominate and take over the conversation and they won't allow you to do your job at the highest level possible. So sometimes you have to take over that conversation and it's uncomfortable for a high C, but you got to get out of your, I mean, a high S, you got to get out of your comfort zone and be a little bit more domineering and take control of the situation and say, listen, here's what we're going to do and why we should do it. And your high D will actually respect that. And then uh, if you're a high C, some personal growth areas to consider, concentrate on doing the right things, not just doing things right. That's a big one. Be less critical of others' ideas and their methods. And then respond more quickly to accomplishing the goal, the overall goal of your clients. Strive to build relationships with the people you're working with. And then be more decisive. Focus less on facts and more on people. It's not that the facts don't matter. Focus more, though, on uh, the people. 
And then finally, take risk along with other people. Be okay, willing to get out of your your uh, your comfort zone and take some risk. Uh, so I, I uh, it's eight fifty nine. What I want to do is open up for a handful of of questions, and then next week I'm going to tie all of this in into actually working with buyers and sellers and other agents and, and how you tie this all together. Uh, before I open up the mic for questions, this month I have a great guy coming in, uh, Tom Big Al Schreider. He's going to be focusing on prospecting, and uh, he is phenomenal, one of the best trainers in the country. And then um, also I've got a LinkedIn guy coming in, Dale Morrow, uh, next month who's going to be talking about how to really maximize your LinkedIn profile to generate uh, leads and get in dialogue with people and build relationships. So some great sessions coming up. Uh, okay, so what I like to do right now is, is uh, if you've got a question, you don't just have to type it in the chat box, but I can now see the chat box. Uh, so I'm kind of scrolling through it. Uh, you can unmute your mic and ask a question as well. Uh, so who's got a question? Hi there, Adam here. Hey, um, Adam. I just have a comment. This is, I've uh, been in here before, it's been a few months, but um, this has come at a very perfect time to to go through this. I'm finally, I've been kind of hibernating over the winter, and I've been working on my listing presentation and video marketing, and one of the biggest struggles that I'm self-aware of is my ability or lack thereof to communicate effectively with people. I am a very high CI and it's like, it, it, it's a struggle to, to get the point across and get and like not overwhelm people. And I've been working on that. So this stuff tonight really helps me get some cliff notes to kind of get myself squared away to move on. So it's, very helpful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I think you'll like uh, next week, I think you want to show up when we go into some practical ways to integrate. How do you know someone else's style when you're at their house? For example, you walk in on a listing presentation. How do you quickly nail where each person is in the on, on this map of the DISC? Uh, really quickly. And then knowing that, how do you adapt your presentation and how can you be prepared for multiple different styles and how can you do some work on the front end to try to get a heads up of where they are on that map? So I think you'll enjoy that uh, in, in the, the practical ways to tie this stuff in. But thank you for sharing that and I uh, appreciate that, Adam. Who else? Anyone you else bet. have a question? I, I just put that in my calendar for next week. So thank you awesome. very much. You bet. Hey, Jonathan, it's JR. Hey, JR. How do you motivate a high C, those perfectionists? Well, um, when you say how do you motivate them, they're motivated. They're motivated to be perfect. They're motivated to uh, accomplish a task. So it's not so much how do you motivate them. Can, maybe ask your question, like give me an example of what you're, 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 you're talking about. I got a property that it's listed to it. You know about five hundred thousand, and I want to lower it below five hundred thousand. And they're just—they're a professional. They're a high C, and so they don't want to lower it. No, they don't. So the way you motivate them is with data. So you want to put together a presentation to sit back with them and say, "Hey, listen, um, what is the ultimate goal of of we're trying to accomplish? Like, what's the task at hand?" Um, and they're going to say, sell our house. And then you're going to say, fantastic. Yes, that is right. And so it's really important that price is spot on and the market, you know, we do our very best when we're pricing a home, but the market really tells us if a home's overpriced or not. And so we've been on the market for six months and this is the activity and I'd have graphs. I'd have how many times it's been shown, how many times has people have come back for a second or third showing, um, and then have all your data and say, we, we don't have an offer. How many offers have you had? Have you hadn't had any? Um, show that data and then say, what the market is telling us is we're priced ourselves outside the market. Now, here's what's really important for you to understand. What do you think when you see a home that's been for sale for a really long time and it hadn't sold? Like, what do you think about that home? 
and they're going to go, well, I think something's wrong with that home. And you go, exactly. And so what we're doing is letting the market in their head create this false story that's not real, that something's wrong with your home. When we both know you've got a beautiful home and it should sell. And the only reason it's not selling right now is because we're priced ourselves out the market. Here's the data and here's what it's saying. And we should be priced at this price point. And if we price here, we can accomplish the task of getting the home sold. Does that make sense? And you're getting them to agree with you. And from that point, it's just helping them see and the data is what's going to help motivate them, not you just saying we should lower the price. Because what they're thinking when you say we should lower the price, what they're thinking is you should work harder and get it sold. And they're pro they're, 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 they're having the conversation, how do we motivate JR to sell our house? Thanks, Jonathan. You bet. Gold you bet. Any other questions? What do you what do, do you when do? all of the letters are fighting each other? All the letters are fighting each other? <laughs> uh, um, well, you'd have to tell me what you mean. You need four people in your your uh, um, in your conversation, and uh, you'd have to be uh, – but sometimes you're going to have lots of different styles, and that's going to come up, you know, because you're, you're – you're, let's just say you're listing or working with a seller or working with a buyer, and there's two people involved in that, and, and you, so that's three personality styles. And you have a, a, a home inspector. That's another personality style. And you have another agent in the transaction, and you've got another – buyer or seller in that transaction. So we got multiple people. And so when you're navigating through that, you're trying at the end of the day, no matter what style you are, you're trying to communicate with every person in that transaction to help them move forward. Uh, so sometimes you have to be the, uh, you have to adapt. You're with a high D and they're like, I'm not, they just want to, they're just trying to steal this house away from me. I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not repairing all these things and paying clothes. I'm not doing it. Right. And then you have to go, Hey, listen, and you might be a high D I've had to do this a lot. I've had to be, and then I've had to adapt my style and go, listen, we got to process this through the ultimate. Cause what's a D they're task oriented. So what, what's the ultimate task? We're trying to sell your home and we're right here at the end zone. And I hate to see us fumble it when we're right here about to score, about to accomplish the task. So let's process through what they're really asking us to do. And we can come back and I think there are a few things we can do to make them give a little bit. But we've got to I think we've got to be a little bit flexible, too. So it's just ha ha it's just being able to I don't know your scenario. I'm just giving you some examples off the top of my head, but it's helping everybody see the perspective of what the ultimate goal is in speaking to them where they hear you and they trust you because if you can have their trust, they're going to listen to you and now you can give your proposal to the, the your solution to the problem or to the challenge to help them overcome it. So I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope so. Sounds good. Any other questions? I see a hand up. Hey, uh, Aussie Rob, how you doing? Go ahead. Go ahead. I've got a customer that um, I'm trying to sign him up for a listing agreement. He is the perfectionist. He wants to get everything done first um, before he's going to list it. So what do you do with someone like that? Um, well, uh, it would depend on what they want to do first before you list it. You know, they may need to do some things first before you list it. Uh, and, and they may not, you know, it, it, there's a, you know, just making sure that fine line of what, when they say perfectionist and they want to get everything done to, um, they actually need to get some stuff done. Uh, I, the listing I just took, the sellers needed to do some stuff. And I told them, we are not going to put it on the market until this gets done because then you're going to have people wanting to see it and it's not going to be ready. So the photographer's coming over Thursday. Can you get this done before Thursday? Uh, on the other scenario, if I have someone who's like, well, I need to do all this stuff before I, I get it sold. I think you have to come in as the, you said they're a high C. Again, you need to come in with some data that supports why it's important to get the home on the market now so that we accomplish the task of selling it, not the task of getting everything perfect. And just having that sometimes with a high C, you got to be a little bit blunt and go, listen, I know that you want to do everything right and you seem like you're the type of person that's like a perfectionist. However, our ultimate goal is to get as many buyers in so that we can sell your home because that's the ultimate task. And in my professional opinion, 
there's really not too much that you have to do to your home to get it ready to sell. I think this, 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 and this need to get done, uh, but I think we can have the photographers scheduled to come out in four days. Do you think four days gives you time to get everything ready? And we can go ahead and do the paperwork tonight. I can put it in MLS three days from now, get the photographer here, boom, it hits the market. We start showing it and we get a contract. And in that meantime, I promise you, I'm going to give you all the information that you need in this process so that you feel confident in uh, what we're doing and the confident in our game plan. Does that make sense? And so it's having that kind of conversation with them. Yeah, I like it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, yes, I can go back and show the personal growth for the, uh, the S as well. Let me go back. There you go. Yes, I'm going to post these slides in uh, Workplace and Real Estate 101. Uh, I don't, it's not an actual link. I'm going to upload a PDF file and I'm going to do that in the Real Estate 101 group. So if you're not in Real Estate 101 and Workplace, make sure you go join that group. You're very welcome, Chris. All right, I've got time for one more question. If someone else has a question. I see some hands up, but I don't know if that's because you have a question or not. Uh, Hi, this is Stephanie. I have just a real quick question Okay. regarding the disc. When yep. you do the disc and you're trying to read the results, how do you learn the results? How do you learn what they mean? I, mean, I'm, I did mine. I'm reading the results, but I don't understand what it's trying to tell me. How do we learn what it's trying oh, to say? Um, well, um, sit down with someone who, who really understands DISC and can interpret your, your report and go through it and what I call validate it to make sure that it's, it's accurate. And, uh, but it should show you uh, three graphs and one you you really want to look at uh um so so uh, did you do the tony robbins one yes i did the tony robbins and it talks talks about the adaptive style and then mm -hmm. it goes down to the natural style yeah and i'm reading this but i don't understand how what that all means in in real life so um what the style means or what yeah, what what the um results mean what do they mean and how do you apply them to real life because i'm like Pretty, pretty balanced all the way around. What does it show? The, what does it show your your adaptive style is? My adapted style is kind of a sixty five S and a fifty eight C and like a forty eight D and like a thirty eight C. All right. So do you see? It. Do you see the screen uh, where it says score in your profile? You see the um, slide, the slide up on the screen. It says scoring your profile. Uh, no, I I don't see that. Maybe that's way further down on the report. No, 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 on the screen behind me. Oh yes, yes. Hold on. Yes, sir, I do. Okay, so see that line going through the middle? There's three styles there, and see the line going through the middle. Yes. That's that's the midpoint, and so anything above that midpoint means. You're more so like on the D, anything above the midpoint means you're going to be more aggressive, more fast paced on the I above that midpoint means you're going to be more um, uh, influencing, persuasive, talkative, relational. The S is going to be more caring, nurturing, slow paced, uh, passive. Uh, the C is going to be more passive and task oriented, uh, not people oriented, conscientious, analytical. So it's it's measuring. If you think back to the slides I talked about, it's measuring those different styles and saying it, it's not that you're one style, but what that report's saying is your adaptive style. You lead with the high S, being more um, more people oriented and more, more caring, nurturing. Um, you probably take a lot of, uh, you, you have clients and I don't know, I'm just going to give an example. You work with first time home buyers. You're probably going to treat them like they're your kids. You're going to, you're going <laughs> to love on them. 
Uh, you're going to do more than just real estate with your clients. You can build great relationships with them and you're always going to want to help them and, and, and err more on helping them than like, like I think of my mom, my mom's a high S she cooks lunch every single Sunday for like an army. She feeds her clients. They all come over to the house every week. People she's working with, she feeds them. She, she's always giving away stuff like, uh, like, you know, wow. she'll, she'll, she'll help and uh, they, they, they're missing something to make a deal work and she's going to help them out in it. Uh, and, and she's, uh, so, so that's that, that's that high S style. And what this is saying is that's what you lead with. And then you follow up by okay, so making high sure you see you're kind of a boss, boss on that side of the thing, but that's the adaptive style. A natural style is just a high I. Yeah. So, 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 so what that means is your natural style when you're not thinking about it, when you're around people who know you and you know them and you feel very comfortable with them, you're going to be way more relational and, uh, more, f um, you're going to be more fast paced with them. Uh, you're going to tell lots of stories with them. You're going to be like, you're going to, you're, you're, you're okay sharing life with them. Where the where the adaptive style, you're gonna tone that down a little bit because you don't all the way know these people until you build a relationship. And once you build a relationship with them to where you really have this level of trust built up, you then your natural style takes over and you shift more into the high eye style. Does that make sense? Like it's Yeah, it, that's that's just very interesting. Yeah. Mm hmm It's very interesting. Things you don't know about yourself. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. I thought I heard one more person talking, when, and I don't want to uh, make sure. Let's see. I see uh, what is the difference between adaptive style and natural style. Uh, so natural style is, um, uh, no, workplace is not on Facebook. Workplace is workplace, and then Facebook is Facebook. Um, I have a group real estate 101 in workplace and I have a group real estate 101 in, um, Facebook adaptive style and natural style is the same. That's okay. If they, they're the same, all it means is if it's a little bit different, you want your graphs. If you see those graphs on the pit bar behind me, how they all look similar. If your graph in your each, each style, if your graph is way different in each style, it means there's some stress going on in your world. Um, and, and that's, what's throwing that off, but your adaptive style is how you adapt when you're around others. You're how you feel like you're expected to behave when you're with clients, you're going to adapt a little bit about how you act and behave. Your natural style is how you are when you're with your friends and family and you know, they don't care. They know you and, and that's your natural style. This is who I am. When I'm with my, my boys and we're hanging out and I'm going to be a little bit more fun with them than if I'm hanging out with a group of agents who just attended a training I did and I don't really know them and we all went out to eat afterwards. Uh, my, my behavioral style is going to be a, adapted a little bit more to that group than if I'm, I'm going to dinner with my, my boys and we're hanging out and we're going to Buffalo Wild Wings to watch the uh, NCAA basketball tournament. Hope that makes sense. Uh, yes, this presentation was recorded, um, and all of my recordings are on Patreon, and that is in the the I posted some uh, useful posted links, some use uh, and it's in that uh, link of useful links, and I'll post it again real quick uh, here, and that's where all my recordings are. And if you want some useful links, uh, the all kind of, uh, if you want to get on the list to know about classes that are coming up, uh, all that kind of good stuff, all that's in these links that I'm about to post for you. Um, there's the useful links. And I'm going to post one more link. Again, I'm starting uh, with Juan Andrew Kane on April 22nd. Um, a uh, something called a fast start school and it's geared for agents looking to really launch their their real estate business and use all the tools exp provides you starts you can get more information there at that link 
Uh, and then I've got a lot, lots, lots of stuff happening. So make sure you click that link and sign up uh, for the uh, email list on the useful links. Okay, guys, listen, thank you for being here. It's 920. Uh, have an, on my time. Um, I'm going to let you run. Thanks so much for being here. Have an awesome night. Thank you. You're very welcome.